So we are watching our video monitors right now out of the state of Florida. A monster hurricane has tens of thousands of people on the run. Those people in at least nine counties under mandatory evacuation orders right now, they want to get out, but there's news breaking right now that getting out is not easy. Tampa's airport has suspended operations at this hour. Milton's path is expected to bring life-threatening conditions to parts of Florida by tomorrow at this very same time. You can see right there, it's a monster. It's arriving, and put this into perspective, less than two weeks after Hurricane Helene hit the same Florida coastline, in that case, Helene was deadly, killed 230. President Joe Biden has canceled his trip to Germany and Africa to stay at the White House to monitor the hurricane response where Milton is barreling in. Here's what he had to say about those preparations moments ago. This could be the worst storm hit Florida in over a century. And God willing, it won't be, but that's what it's looking like right now. Immediately approved the pre-landfall emergency declarations in Florida. This is the second one in a week, the second time in a week, and there have been two before that, by the way. Um, and uh, I sent FEMA Administrator Chris Well down to Florida yesterday to work in intensively with the state and local partners as you prepare to deploy more resources. She's going to continue that work between Florida and North Carolina in the coming days. I'm calling on the airlines and other companies to provide as much service as possible to accommodate evacuations and not to engage in price gouging. Most importantly, I've urged everyone, everyone currently located in Hurricane Milton's path to listen to local officials and follow the safety instructions. You all have been reporting on the highways, shoulders being opened, everybody's heading out. And uh, if you're under evacuation or orders, you should evacuate now, now, now. You should have already evacuated. It's a matter of life and death, and that's not hyperbole. It's a matter of life and death. <clears throat> so let me add that FEMA has provided 300 ambulances to move people who can't move themselves out of health care facilities. And while we prepare for Hurricane Milton, we're still surging resources in North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, Tennessee to respond to Hurricane Alina. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's real. The impact is still there. And we're going to leave. Uh, we're not going to leave until the job is done. The job is going to be a big one for sure. And to that point, look at this. Beds for emergency workers set up inside a stadium, cot after cot, just 12 inches from each other throughout that entire floor of the stadium. This is in St. Petersburg. It's added now to a base camp for 10,000 emergency responders set up at Tropicana Field. By the way, that's the home of the Tampa Bay Rays. Jess, we're getting a master class right now in American emergency response before tragedy hits. And it really is impressive. Right now, the National Weather Service has issued tropical storm warnings, hurricane warnings, storm surge warnings, and flood warnings for all of our communities throughout Florida's coastline as we head into the coming days. Right now, we're gearing up for those light showers to turn into heavy showers, to turn into one of the most worst events, actually the worst event that we've seen in Tampa Bay history in over 100 years. All these advisories issued not only on the Tampa side, but as well as the Atlantic side. These have a cost with them too. take a look behind me. The storm is strong and it's expected to hit them. Tampa Bay area at around a category three as we head into the overnight hours Wednesday into early Thursday morning. Current conditions right now sitting at 153 miles per hour. If it were to hit 157, it would be back into the category five. It's just north of the Yucatan Peninsula, the eye sitting about 80 miles north of inland areas. Now, as we head all the way into the coming days, this category four storm turns into a category three just before it hits inland close to Tampa into the overnight hours on Wednesday, early morning hours, Thursday. This is an overnight storm. It's going to be pitch black as this makes its way just into the Tampa Bay, waking up early morning hours on Thursday. That's when it's now over Orlando heading over into Daytona Beach, where it's still holding it a category two at that point. Those max sustained winds are going to be impressive as it sweeps throughout the peninsula. And with the winds, we also have to continue to keep a close eye on storm surge from the keys up into the Tampa Bay area. We can see anywhere up to around 12 feet of storm surge in these local communities. That includes St. Petersburg all the way over into Sarasota and everywhere in between. Now we're also starting to keep a close eye on the east coast of Florida. And the reason why I say that is because as it holds that strength from a category two over into those shorelines, we're expected to see strong winds and heavy storm surge into those early morning hours on Thursday could impact many beach communities along that shore too. As we take a look at wind gusts, this is into the evening hours Wednesday, just ahead of the hurricane impacting the Tampa Bay area. Watch what happens as we head into those Thursday morning hours. About 100 mile per hour winds expected at times close to our coastline near Longboat Key. This storm will 
sweep over Ruskin. It'll break just into the round of the nine mile per hour wind gust as that eye sweeps throughout that community and back into gusty conditions heading into those early morning hours. I'll have more on the wind gust. I'll have more on the storm surge coming up in just a bit. But for now, over to you, Reed. Nobody watching it like our CBS crews watching it as it makes its way to the Florida coast. CBS News Tom Hansen in Arcadia, about two hours south of Tampa, where the efforts to get out continue. Hey there, well, I'm standing in Arcadia, Florida, which is a little bit more inland than those coastal communities, which are really going to see a lot of the immediate impacts of this monster storm. Standing at DeSoto Middle School, it's not going to be a middle school for very long, though, because this is going to be turned into a shelter for people who have nowhere else to go. You know, one thing about this area, there are a lot of low lying homes. There are a lot of mobile homes, people who will not be able to escape once the time comes where the storm has arrived. One of the main concerns here, this low lying area flooding. This ground is saturated from storm after storm, rain system after rain system. We spoke to a county official earlier. She tells me that this is eerily reminiscent of Hurricane Ian, which gave some serious catastrophic conditions to this area as well. You can see behind me, Red Cross has already started to get into place. They are going to start setting up. They're anticipating up to 300 people who are going to come to this middle school school for power and shelter. One person has already arrived. He spoke to my producer saying that he has a CPAP machine. He needs electricity. That is going to be a huge concern here. As you know, Central Florida, there are a lot of trees. There is a, a heavy tree canopy in certain parts. That flying debris will inevitably hit power lines and knock out power. We've seen it time and time again during this hurricane season where thousands and thousands of people, if not more than a million people without power, especially after Helene. That's going to be a huge concern here. But right now it is wait and see as those critical hours inch nearer and nearer to the landfall of this storm. We are going to see a much more active situation at this middle school behind me. Back to you.